have worked in the police department for years, and I have never seen anything like it in my entire life. It was supposed to be a simple reconstruction, and I was just supposed to report back to my superiors. But what I experienced, I'm not even sure I'll be able to report it. I don't even know what to report. All I know is that I got the scare of my life, and I don't know what to do. As one of the top detectives in my precinct, I was very happy when my superior officer handed me a new case file. And it was for a murder case. I remember being so filled with joy. I had been waiting for a case like this, and the fact that it was a murder case made me more excited. If I cracked this case, I would be praised by my peers and even my superior officers. I was determined to give it my best shot and crack the case. If I'm being honest, a part of me initially expected that this would be so simple. I pride myself on being an excellent detective, and this was not my first case. I had helped solve plenty of murder cases in the past, and they were almost all the same to me. Either the wife turns up dead, and it turns out it was the husband, or sometimes it was the other way around. But from my experience, when there was murder, it was most likely a family member that did it, or at best, a very close friend. Either way, I was prepared to handle it. I brought the case file home that day, and I was excited to go through it. But it was the most surprising thing I had ever come across. It turned out that this case was not like any other case I had worked on in the past. It was a lot different, and there was no way it would be as easy as I thought. The victim was found dead in her house, and there were no leads. The worst part was that the victim had no known family member, no children, or husband, or even friends. She lived in a duplex building outside of town, and no one really knew a lot about her. Only that she was the typical old lady in children's stories. She never liked people coming by her house, and she never gave out candy on Halloween. In fact, she kept to herself all of the time. And to cap it all up, she was not even old. She was in her 40s. The case file seemed like a dead case, and now I was beginning to wish I had not even been handed the case. The more I read it, the more I realized that this was a very peculiar case. There was something fishy about it. Something didn't quite add up and I had to find out what it was. It was clear that this was a murder, but who would do this? She never bothered anyone. She was not the most pleasant person, but still, why would anyone think to kill her? There were so many questions bothering me, yet so few answers so I decided to go to bed and sleep it all off. But I couldn't bring myself to get some sleep. I had nightmares upon nightmares, and I felt like I would not rest until I figured out the case. I suddenly sat up in my bed and glanced at my watch. It was exactly 10 p.m. An idea began to marinate in my head, but I was not sure if it was the right thing to do or not. A few more moments of thinking and I grabbed my coat and car keys and in the next few hours, I found myself in front of the house wondering if I was doing the right thing. For some reason, I needed to see the house. I needed to investigate indoors. I didn't care that the police had already done a clean sweep. I had to be here alone to see things for myself. And maybe I may notice a couple of things that can provide insight into the investigation. I took in a deep breath and walked into the house and realized the door was open. It was a bit windy and cold and instantly, I felt the urge to sneeze because of all the dust. She had been dead for only a week, why was there so much dust? I grabbed my flashlight and slowly walked into the sitting room which looked so simple and quaint. There was a rocking chair just by the TV and just when I was about to look away, I realized that the chair seemed to be moving slightly back and forth, like someone was just there. I gasped and shifted backwards when I felt like I had collided with someone, and I turned around and there was nothing, nothing. I felt something behind me. I felt someone behind me. I was so sure of it. 
I was not crazy. The whole thing was getting a little too spooky for me, so I decided to leave as soon as I could. This did not look good at all, and I decided to come back later in the day. The darkness was not helping. But as I turned to leave, I heard a noise coming from the kitchen. It sounded like someone was there. I knew what I heard. This was a secluded area, and there were not many sounds around. I could not have heard anything else. Hello? I called out as my detective senses were tingling and I slowly approached the kitchen. Maybe the killer wanted to steal something of hers and had chosen tonight to come for it. I was brimming with excitement. I thought I was going to catch the killer, or at least catch someone who would turn out to be a lead. It would be the greatest thing that could ever happen to me in my career. I ducked behind the kitchen wall with my gun drawn and tried to slow my breathing. I had turned off my flashlight because I didn't want whoever was in there to see me coming. As I stood behind the wall, I could still hear faint sounds and I knew for sure that I was not alone in this house. I counted to three in my head and jumped into the kitchen with my gun drawn. There was nobody in there, but there was a small kettle on fire. I could hear the sound of boiling water and my assurance was further strengthened. I was not alone. I turned off the safety of my gun and turned on my flashlight as well. The tension in the air was intense and I could feel my heart pounding heavily in my chest. Police, come out now, I called out, trying to make sure my voice was not so shaky. But I knew I was failing miserably. Whoever they were, they were taunting me. I could feel them around the house. Suddenly, from the corner of my eye, I saw something move, like a shadow, past the kitchen door. It was so fast and so soundless, and it was gone before I directed my flashlight at it. Just then, I decided to turn off my flashlight and chase after the perpetrator, because that was what I thought it was, a perp. As I reached the kitchen entrance, I tripped and fell, but then I got up as fast as I could, determined to make sure the person did not run away. I saw the figure again run into the bedroom area, and I followed in hot pursuit. It was still dark, but my eyes had adjusted a little bit. I got to the bedroom and locked the door behind me. You're trapped now, I said, holding my gun tight in front of me. Then I began to hear some whispering coming from the closet, or maybe it was whimpering. I was not so sure, but as soon as I heard it, I knew I had gotten the killer. But there was something strange about it. From the cracks in the closet, it did not seem like anything was in there. And besides, the closet had been sealed shut by tapes. There was no way anyone could have gotten in without taking out the tapes at least. I was confused, but I approached the closet and the whispering stopped, then started again, then stopped. I knew I was onto something, so I began to tear the tapes one by one till the closet was free enough for me to open. As soon as I opened the closet, I realized that it was empty, and now I felt like I was losing my mind. I stepped back slowly and once again bumped into something. But this time, when I turned, there was someone there, or should I say, something. It was the woman, the victim. I recognized her from her pictures. She seemed to be floating in the air and was as white as snow. I was about to scream when she placed her hand on her lips. Then she screamed, Leave! I ran past it and threw myself out the bedroom window and got in my car as fast as I could. Needless to say, I declined that case and that was the last I ever heard of it. I wonder who got the case next. <laughs>